We have a monstrously jam-packed show today. We are dealing with never not working. We got our starts of the week. We get into a ton of matchups, and we're dealing with bye weeks. So much going on, and we have a little bit of an Icarus situation on today's show as well. Like the video, subscribe, leave your comments, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are nasty, I'm your host today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by my best friend, of the moment, Jason Moore. Best friends talking fantasy football. We best are best friends, friends talking, fantasy talking football. about fantasy football. <gasps> oh, Jay Grizz is here. He got a little jealous there. That was of the jealousy best friends. of the best friends. You're not my best friend, Jay. Do he bears is. do bears get jealous? They get jealous <gasps> when they see. Well, I guess so. Uh, well, a cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz certainly probably does. But like in. Do bears have those emotions? Well, let me ask you this. If a bear saw another bear eating honey, yeah. and he wanted that honey, I feel like he would be a little jealous. Okay. Actually, it'd probably just be anger. Is it? Yeah. Greed. I mean, it's pretty close to the, the same thing. <laughs> Welcome into the podcast. We will not talk about bears the whole time. Andy is out. He is in dad mode today. Should be back tomorrow on today's episode. Never not working. The news and the notes... We start breaking down the matchups, our starts of the week, and of course, the boom, boom, kicker of the week, jam-packed Thursday, but how are you doing today, Jay? You feeling good? I'm feeling great. Yeah, no, this is a big show. Thankfully, uh, well, depending on your perspective here, we have four bye weeks, so two fewer matchups to get into two today. It's better for us. It's we better for us. It's not better for the collective us when right. trying to make start decisions because we are missing players. My sweet, sweet King Henry oh. is gone. That is, man, it really stinks when, you're, when your real good players are on by. I like having full strength rosters. Sure, yeah, but I personally, I like to get it out of the way now. That's, but that, I mean, that's just really a personality thing. But if you can get it out of the way, still scrape through a win, I mean, that feels very, very good. Yeah. Knowing that you're on the other side of it. A couple house cleaning Bits of news here. FootClanGiveaway.com. It is a gigantic giveaway. It is completely free to enter. We're giving away signed jerseys from Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurts, DJ Moore. Maybe the new resurgence of DJ Moore. Yeah, we, we can we can hope. Come on, PJ Walker and company. Uh, and a virtual studio tour with us is available to win. Again, completely free. FootClanGiveaway.com. Follow us on the socials, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. You can find the three of us, our personals on Instagram, at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, and I am at FF Hitman. Of course, those are our Twitter handles as well. Jason. Yo. Are you ready for the show? I sure am. <laughs> That's good. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. As we talked about, the bye weeks are here. It is the time to start preparing for those bye weeks. You might as well get out ahead of it because you know that it's going to happen. That bye week is not changing. It is locked into the schedule. So here are some suggestions that we, we want to give people because you want to be ready for those things. So like uh, next week, you know, Woo, brother, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. Mm. And then week eight, week eight is Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert at the quarterback position. They are Ugh. they are on bye. That's going to be brutal, but check this out. Ryan Tannehill is wildly available. In week seven, he gets the Indianapolis Colts, and then he's got the Houston Texans. And, of course, the king of the stream lately. He is on his own bye week right now, Jared Goff. He is highly rostered, but here's the thing. 
Make sure you drop it like it's hot because Jared Goff, number one, not playing right now. Mm -hmm. He's not really a quarterback that people are probably going to keep on their bench. And he comes out of the bye week to face the Dallas Cowboys. Holding Jared Goff through a bye week after a bad performance right. is something that I don't think most leagues are going to have happen. So he's a great streaming candidate uh, with Be a couple of because uh, after matchups. Yes, after the Dallas Cowboys. This is why we're bringing it up. Week 8 versus Miami, their defense is bleeding the fourth most points to the quarterback position. And after the bye week, we could have a healed up DeAndre Swift. Amon Ra, the sun god, we could have him back as well. Running backs, this is one. This one's a little bit tougher, ladies and gentlemen, because Derrick Henry, Pierce, Jacobs, they're out this week. But then we're talking week seven and eight, you know, Cook, Sanders, Eccles, Clyde. Jason, you're you're getting all your bye weeks out of the way. I know you are naming a lot of my players: Eckler, Henry, Jalen Hurts. They're oh good. I'm I'm glad I'm getting them out of the way early, like you said, Mike. Uh, and finding running backs is hard, especially this far in advance. But a couple guys you could stash: DJ Dallas of the Seattle Seahawks with uh, the unfortunate injury to Rashad Penny. Travis Homer is also out for the Seahawks. DJ Dallas wildly available could just slot right into a receiving role and just it be him and Kenneth Walker for the foreseeable future that is in the range of outcomes and the Gus bus I want to remind people Gus Edwards of the Baltimore Ravens is going to return soon we don't know when it is but he is designated he has been practicing the last couple of weeks if you've seen the photos the dude has uh not lost the muscle tone the Gus Bus is still shredded and ready to go. And look at the look at the Ravens situation. Like it, Dobbins is back, but Dobbins over the last couple of weeks, the role is not really increasing. And I believe uh, Kenyon Drake had either more touches or more snaps than him this past week for the Ravens. It's just something to monitor. And Gus Edwards is he, he's available in about seventy five percent of leagues. Wide receivers look they're a little bit easier to replace is Zay, Zay Jones is the the ultimate uh break glass in case of emergency he will always be on your waivers he's always going to get about eight targets a game tight ends though Hayden Hurst pick him up right now next week the Atlanta Falcons allowing the fourth most points to that position the second most tight end receptions I mean this is a fantastic situation uh if, because next work next week Dallas Goddard Tyler Higby on by I am making Kyle make a note Make a note for our Higby replacement. And then week eight, Travis Kelsey is gone. So, look, Hayden Hurst, or if you're in a really, really deep league, Daniel Bellinger. Who? Daniel Bellinger of the New York Giants, a rookie who has just taken up the snaps. 74% last week. He does have two touchdowns on the year. And over the next two weeks, we're looking at Jacksonville and Seattle. And because we're always working over here, we're going to give you some defensive players or defensive teams to look at. The Denver Broncos coming up, the Jets, followed by the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's week seven and eight. Or the Colts, they're available as well. They get the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Tannehill is bottom, in, bottom seven in sack rate right now. And then week eight, they get the Manders. Carson Wentz, who's dealing with his own injury right now? Jay, do you have any other... The, you yeah. want to jump in here? That's it. Was a lot here because we're always working and trying to get ahead of things takes time. Yeah, I would say three quick things. One, the Denver Broncos are a great pickup. They aren't going to be rostered because of their bad performance and the fact they're playing the Chargers. Their matchup the next two weeks are great. Um, but if you're a fantasy football manager, there are two levels of quick advantage. One, and this is why we're bringing this whole thing up. A lot of fantasy managers don't look forward at their upcoming bye weeks. They just don't prepare. So if you do that one little thing, which this whole segment was about, if you just look at when your players are on bye week and try to prepare a week earlier, you have a huge advantage. And then all of a sudden, bye weeks that suck actually become an advantage for the Foot Clan over people who aren't paying attention. If you want to take it the next level up, oh, let's say you got CEH. Yeah. Okay. Go look at when his bye is. Okay, oh, it's going to be week uh, eight, I believe, yeah, for, the, it's coming for the Chiefs. Up. Go look who you're playing in week eight. Trade them, Clyde. And see if you <laughs> go, you know what I mean? Prep by looking at your future bye weeks and trading them to managers you're going to play. We call that the dirty, dirty. Oh, dirty, dirty. <laughs> I mean, look, 
This is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, yes. let's get nasty out here with bye weeks coming up. Just Oh, it's such a brutal thing when they realize it. Oh, I know. It's, 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 I've been on both sides of it. One side feels good. The other side is what have I done? I love it. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The NFL Network is reporting that Manders quarterback Carson Wentz, he's dealing with a lot of things. Number one, he's dealing with the fact that he sucks at playing quarterback. But number two is he's dealing with a biceps tendon strain suffered last week. He's not 100%. He's going to start tonight against the Bears, and then he will try to heal up. The nice thing is he's going to have the extra rest. That's what they're talking about because it's a Thursday night football game. He has a longer time to rest, but they're just glossing over the fact he has absolutely no time to rest for tonight's game. He's <laughs> like, he's going to play tonight. And uh, are, are we, is this like a full bailout? If you were going to try and stream him, you're going to look for a different option. It's still the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that you're going to be able to just find a better option on the waiver wire. You know, Geno Smith probably not still sitting there. What if, if if you got Geno out there, absolutely. I mean, you should have pivoted what, anyways. What but. about what about uh what about Danny Jones against the Baltimore Ravens? And and Daniel Jones has been Daniel Jones has Daniel Jones has been okay. It could like look what the man is dealing with. Yeah, it is it it is a bunch of no name wide receivers out there, and they're winning. I know Barkley is a lot of the reason for the offense, but but Danny Jones is doing okay. Yeah, and um, he had seven designed runs for him last week. Uh, he has had a lot of huge fantasy performances over his short, I think I would awful do it. career. Yeah, that, I mean, it, one of them, you know, like they're both not that great NFL quarterbacks, but one of them is currently dealing with a biceps injury on no rest. So yeah, I, I'm I'm fine making that pivot. How are your biceps today, Jay? Uninjured. Yeah. Yeah. Swole. <laughs> Good. James Conner did not practice on Wednesday for the Arizona Cardinals. Coach Cliff Kingsbury says he's day to day. All right. Wait. Uh, that's a weird report to uh, put out there because the Arizona Cardinals did not practice. I don't know if you are aware of that. I the what? Yeah, they didn't practice. They took like the day off from practice. A little, uh, just a nice reward from uh, Sunday's game. From the collapse at the end of the game, just huh. kind of a, a day of rest for everyone. If huh. you want to look at a coach that does not crack the whip, it's Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, okay, I mean, but you do have to report even when you don't practice. Yeah. Like who would uh, have not practiced? So it's interesting. Obviously, the Cardinals signed two running backs uh, coming in, but they. They also lost two of their backup running backs. So TBD on James Conner looks to be the Eno Benjamin show this weekend. Tyreek Hill was a full participant on Wednesday. That's great news. Raheem Mostert did not practice. However, did we we knew that was coming? Is that correct? Are we are we standing <laughs> by that, Jason? Because you you kept telling me. So you kept telling me Mostert. We knew this was going to happen. <laughs> okay, here's what's going on. Andy reached out to me last night, oh, freaking out yeah. because he's got Mostert. Because he's you've like, been Where telling you us this? we knew this was going to happen. So earlier in the day yesterday, I saw. Uh, I didn't watch the press conference. I saw a tweet where um, it, it basically said that they were going to give Mostert the day off, kind of a day of rest. This was to be expected later on in the day. Uh, Mostert was absent from practice. I cannot find that tweet. I can't find it anywhere. You I have made it up. I, I don't think I did. I really don't think I did. I, I remember the picture. It was a picture of him at the podium. I don't remember who tweeted it, but I cannot find that tweet. That's I can't not great. find that information anywhere. So the, the reality is uh, you, you we really need to just watch the practice report. If Moster is you know a full participant in practice today on Thursday, then Wednesday's just a day of rest. The truth is, a 30-year-old running back getting the workload that he's getting should always have Wednesday off. That is normal. I do not think anyone should freak out yet. But obviously, based on Mostert's injury history, oh, man, you get the nerves. You get the cold sweats. You're like, oh, no, here, here it comes again. And then I did see a report this morning that the offensive coordinator said, Chase Edmonds' touches are coming. So I was like, 
Okay. Uh, is that because most churches are not healthy? So we yeah. will monitor this, and, and by the end of the show, uh, maybe we will have an update on maybe. Thursday's practice. Uh, but that's just a reminder. Chase Edmonds, despite the uh, despair that you feel having Chase Edmonds on your roster, do not drop him. He, he is just – it's adjusting what you're expecting from him. He is now an insurance running back, but a pretty good insurance running back. Rashad Bateman – Wide receiver of the Baltimore Ravens was a did not practice. He didn't play last week. He didn't play uh, the second half two weeks ago because of this foot injury. This it that's not great. Yeah, it's not great. It's it's also a little like weird in the sense that two weeks ago when he didn't play the second half, he he had his helmet on. He was ready to go in the game the whole time. It just seemed like maybe they should have put him out there, but he he should be fine. And then he missed last week, and now he's not practicing a week and a half later. So Reminds me of of someone else, T. Higgins, who yeah. did not practice, yeah, but played last week, you know, wink, wink, like he, he started the game, and then he was on the sideline, and they said if the right situation was there, they could have put him in the game. Seemed like the right situation when you're trying to mount a comeback, a, a last-second comeback to have – a good wide receiver on the field, but I guess that wasn't the situation that Coach Taylor was talking about. We will see moving forward if he is going to play, but that's uh, you should be preparing to be without T. Higgins. Yeah, and and Rashad Bateman. I would yeah. I would assume at this point yes. that both players are are at the very least you need to have other people you could plug in your lineup for Sunday. Colts running backs. Jonathan Taylor did not practice, but we are getting a report that he will practice today. That is not a report that he has, but they're saying he's going they to. They looked in the Magic 8 ball, and they said, will Jonathan Taylor practice? It's I guess. Outcome looks good, yes. is what it said. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I mean the, the Magic 8 ball is basically how we should do all of our fantasy <laughs> decisions anyways. Uh, the Patriots, Damian Harris, limited. Limited, but he is he's going to be gone for a while. The The... Good news on him being at practice in a limited fashion is that it seems like they won't put him on the IR. But that's like that's where this injury is. This hamstring right. injury is a is he going to miss four weeks or is he going to come back? Hopefully by week eight, when Devin Singletary is on by, and I very much need Damian Harris. But oh, uh, we'll we'll, uh, okay. we'll we'll see. He's he is not playing this week. He is not playing next week. He's out for at least two and probably more. So that is TBD on Damian Harris. Mac Jones was limited. Most guys with his injury would have been a not practice. No, but, they wouldn't have shown up. But he was limited, so we'll see if he plays. Saints updates. Chris Olave uh, in the third stage of the concussion protocol. He has not experienced any additional symptoms. The third stage is football-specific exercise, so it sounds like he will get out there, and then they will see did any symptoms pop up. But that's great news for Olave to be here at this point he's a great test candidate going forward in the post Tua new concussion protocols sure. to see his progression seems like it has been what in yesteryear would have been okay he should be active this week so if he misses this week uh then then it's it's a real kind of a clear sign that you should take concussions as you're going to always miss a week and Jameis Winston was back at practice limited, but however, he did not practice at all last week, so this is good news for him. And Taysom Hill was limited. He was limited last week with this rib injury, but I mean, uh, Taysom Hill is uh, everyone's golden child, so he'll probably play and score a bajillion points. Isaiah McKenzie returned to full practice from the concussion protocol, so we would expect to see him. He becomes, to me, right into the wide receiver three conversation. We don't know for sure. What the split will be with Khalil Shakir, the the rookie wide receiver, but I would think that McKenzie will, if it's a timeshare, McKenzie will have the larger chunk of it. So yeah, he's I mean, interesting. He, he had the larger chunk of it with their veteran, newly signed wide receiver, uh, you know, Crowder, and so now right. wh while Khalil, uh, w while Shakir was on the bench, so. Isaiah McKenzie's a really good play uh, if you're playing DraftKings. I mean, the matchup this week is one that you just really you, – you want that Bills-Chiefs game. Are you uh, you telling me something here? I'm not uh, – I'll tell you tomorrow <laughs> when we reveal our lineups. You mean with, uh, your lineup with uh, Isaiah McKenzie I in there? I will tell you Jack Squat. 
That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will take a quick break, and we will be right back. Hey, we're back. Let's get into the fantasy forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right. Our first game. San Francisco 49ers at 3 and 2. They take on the Atlanta Falcons at 2 and 3. The DraftKings sports book line is San Francisco minus 5 and a half. The over under is 44 and a half. San Francisco, their defense is elite, number one in sack rate, number two in pressure, number one versus the run, number three versus the pass. Good luck, Atlanta Falcons. Jason, what are your big storylines from this show? From this show, that it's awesome, uh, that it's it's funny and accurate, entertaining. But from this game, um, I would say that uh, I don't I don't see how the Falcons do much against the 49ers defense. They have been very elite um you know they're they're getting after the quarterback you've got Kyle Pitts coming back from injury we expect him to be there um I'm not starting him I just don't know how you can the only way that you could start Kyle Pitts is in some GPP play where you're waiting for that big explosive game and it can win you some money but in your home leagues where you just need points to win every single week very hard to trust Kyle Pitts so, so uh, like that's what I wanted to measure here for Kyle Pitts you people had to pick somebody up last week are you rolling with that streamer that you had uh or are you going back to Kyle Pitts like I mean Taysom Hill if you spent up on him you're probably playing him I understand that but lower level guys like like Bob Tunyon against the Jets Hayden Hurst against the Saints uh, Hayden Hurst, yes. Bob Tunyon, no. The you way play that, Pitts over Bob Tunyon? I would I would play Pitts over Bob Tunyon. The The reality is, if you've got someone like an Irv Smith, a Hunter Henry, a Robert Tunyon, th those are streaming options. Those are streaming options just as likely as Kyle Pitts to give you three points. You know what I mean? Like, sure. You, you, you can get three points from any of these guys and be disappointed, but only one of those players could actually go out there and put up 20 points from the tight end position that would be Pitts. so it, it, in that situation whereas Hayden Hurst Hayden Hurst I expect to be around 10 points this week especially with the injury to T Higgins and I would rather take the five to eight point expected gap that you're going to get with Hayden Hurst to lose that upside if that makes sense on the Falcons side of the ball the remaining guys not Kyle Pitts Tyler Algier Caleb Huntley I imagine this is a you were really trying to get out of this for oh, this anybody. A, Just, this is a no from me, dog. I I mean. Opposing if, running games allow, they're getting three yards per carry yeah. against the Falcons. I mean, that's just. They're giving up 15.8 points per game, fantasy points per game, to the running back position, the whole team position. Now, let's just assume that, well, this running game isn't quite as good as maybe some of the ones they face. Maybe it's a little lower than that. Now, divide that up from Tyler Algier. Caleb Huntley, and it's really a three-way timeshare with Avery Williams. So this yeah, sure. this is like no thank you. I don't yep. I don't want that at all. If I have to start one, it's Algier. Um, Where are you at with Drake London? Thirty-three percent target share, which is the highest among all rookie wide receivers since twenty fourteen. He is consuming a lot of the pie, but hasn't produced in the last couple of weeks. Are you willing to put him in there, or would you go with like Jacoby Myers? Jacoby Myers possible. feels safer to okay. me, but I am willing to play Drake London just because of talent and target share. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers, while they are great against all positions, that's kind of the one place where they're more middle of the pack. On the San Francisco side, Jeff Wilson, since week two, he's been a top 12 running back. He has been dominating. However, we do have a little bugaboo here that Tevin Coleman got on the field last week. He has been called up again. He stole... Yes, stole mm -hmm. two touchdowns from Jeff Wilson this past week. I st I remain upset about those two touchdowns. And Ty Davis Price, TDP, back to a full practice. Do you still have the confidence that Jeff Wilson will have the lion's share of the work? Oh, absolutely. Jeff okay. Wilson is just that much <laughs> better. Last week you had uh, eight carries from Tevin Coleman. 
you had 17 from Jeff Wilson. They're not, you know, they're not going to give 100% of running back carries to Jeff Wilson, but he will be the main guy, and this matchup is phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to talk about Jeff Wilson later. I, I have no hesitation. I don't even know how you could bench Jeff Wilson in a matchup like this. What if you picked up Ken Walker against Arizona? I would, I would play Jeff Wilson over Ken Walker. Okay. Uh, Debo, he's always in. Brandon Ayuk, his best finish so far is wide receiver 33. If there is a matchup, it's against uh, a team allowing over 32 points to the fantasy wide receiver position. And I do think that George Kittle, is you play him every week, but we're going to talk about him a little bit later. The New England Patriots at 2-3 and three take on the Cleveland Browns at 2-3. and three, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cleveland minus 2.5. The over-under is 43.5. On the Patriots' side of the ball, either the, the manliest of men, Mac Jones, is back or... We'll see if the Cleveland Browns get zapped. If they're going to get zapped, Jason, do you have the confidence in the the pass catchers for the Patriots, not named Ramondre Stevenson? Uh, yeah, the so pass Jacoby catcher. In, okay, yeah, the pass catcher, <laughs> okay. Jacoby Myers. I'm I'm fine starting Jacoby Myers. Thirty one point eight percent target share. I've you know I've been. Uh, he's just really really good. If you're in a PPR league, he's going to get his targets. He's he really really good route runner, just a solid all-around wide receiver that demands targets. It's an earned statistic, and he earns them. So from that side of the ball, I do expect it to be Bailey Zappy. Uh, Mac zap, Jones, zap, 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 zap. Zap. You got zapped. Uh, I, I, um, the, the Mac Jones has been at practice, but he's really only been at practice for the beginnings of practice, hasn't been around for the ends, is kind of there in the same way that Damian Harris has been there. Now we're getting closer to him returning. It's possible he plays. I mean, we haven't got the full practice report from today yet, but my expectation is it'll be another Bailey Zappi week. Same. Uh, Curtis Samuel tonight with uh, Bicep Boy or Jacoby Myers. Uh, I would go Curtis. <laughs> uh, boo, that one's tough. I'm going to... You sound like you're malfunctioning. I'm gonna go with Curtis Samuel. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the Thursday night football be the tiebreaker there. They're very similar manufactured touches. You you expect both of these guys to get eight targets tonight. You'll probably be a little bit more down the field with Jacoby Myers, but historically speaking, the touchdown upside is more on Curtis Samuel's side. Very very close. Give me the uh, you know the three days head start on knowledge that I get a Thursday night football play. And as a reminder, always if you've got players in tonight's game you've got david montgomery or curtis samuel in your flex get them out of your flex put them in your running back or wide receiver spot so that you actually have flexibility later in the week always a good reminder hunter henry still plays the tight end position the cleveland Browns side of the ball though nick chubb dominating fools this year leads the nfl in red zone carries we kind of highlighted him during our redraft yesterday but kareem hunt Tied for third in red zone carries. They are truly establishing it. The highest of T for the Cleveland Browns. Where is this a matchup where you still you have the confidence for Kareem Hunt, who seems to be basically if in a half point scoring format, he gets you either eight points or a lot of points because he got you a touchdown. But he's his work is extremely consistent. But the Patriots are sixth against fantasy running backs. Yeah, they're sixth against fantasy running backs. If you adjust for the schedule and look at who they've played, they're even better than that. Their run defense Those is... Those darn Patriots, man. I know. They're, it's like It doesn't matter. They're always good enough. So, no, this isn't a Kareem Hunt game to me. This is one where... I, I have a, a couple of teams where I've got the, um, the, the backup running back tandems you know I've got like Kareem Hunt and Pollard and Dylan and it's just every week trying to pick which one looks like they have the right matchup this right. isn't a Kareem Hunt week to me so if in that one you would go Pollard Pollard or or would you go Dylan over Kareem Hunt um in the battle of the backups the battle of the backups I would probably bench man Dylan's been getting so little work. yeah that's it's 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 worrisome it, it lowest workload of the season for AJ Dylan last week yeah, I, I'm going to probably go Pollard, Hunt, Dylan in that. All right. Uh, it, by the way, Ramondre Stevenson is in. I don't think we need to discuss him. He's going to be fantastic. Uh, Amari Cooper, 35% target share versus – and look, he has uh, – or I'm sorry, per Dwayne McFarland, he has a 35% target share versus man coverage this year, and New England uses man coverage 40% of the time. Amari Cooper – 
been very solid. Do you have any hesitation putting him out there? You cannot have hesitation putting okay. him out there. He, right, he could have a bad game, but he's so involved. He's been so Whoa. good. Hey, that man, one spooked me. Hasn't he been like a top 10 wide receiver three times this year? I mean, we have the we can find out. Yeah, I mean. Oh, well, well, do you want to find out together? I do, but I want you to find out and then twice. tell me. Mm, wide twice. receiver two, week three against Pitt. Wide receiver six this past week. But. I mean, he's he's been fantastic the last three weeks. He is he is averaging over eighty yards a game. So yeah. I mean, he's yeah. Put him in and David Njoku. He's in. He. I'm so, I'm so frustrated with David Njoku. Not not the player. I'm sorry, but the Cleveland Browns that he was one of the the late round tight ends that we pushed the chips all in. Mm -hmm. Now I mean, one was Cole Komet. We didn't know that the Chicago Bears were going to refuse to play, ball play modern football, and they were just going to run the whole time. And then it was like, okay, well, let, hopefully David Njoku is that guy for us. And then week one, they like didn't use him, even though everything was there for Jacoby Brissett, targets the tight end. They just gave him the bag of money. He's an elite athlete. And it didn't work out week one. It was like, oh, crap. But the the good news is David Njoku is here, and David Njoku is an every week start now to me. He is a top ten every week start at the tight end position. Do you disagree with that, or is he? In I absolutely agree with okay. you. He he's been so involved, and he has the athletic profile and the talent to get it done when you get the balls the ball in his hands, where he can break tackles, uh, you know, and go for a thirty yard touchdown. Not many tight ends can do that. Also, I want to retract what I said earlier about my three backup running backs. A.J. Dillon would be number one in against oh, the Jets. I okay. forgot the matchup. I, w sure. I went and I looked. Uh, so it would go A.J. Dillon, Pollard, Hunt. I have a question, Jason, that could affect our best friend Ship? status. Okay. Mm. David Njoku or Taysom Hill? <laughs> no, uh, I'm happy to report we're going to be friends. <sighs> Because I would still go David and Joku. I realize that Thank goodness. It, it's very, very similar to what we were talking about with Kyle Pitts. Like the, the expectation for Taysom Hill is probably going to be three to five fantasy points, whereas the expectation for David and Joku should be around 10. Now, the upside is obviously, but we just saw it really. The upside for Taysom Hill is a multi touchdown game. But unlike most of the other kind of crappy tight end options you have, David Njoku can go out there and put up a a, a two touchdown game. Yeah, last three weeks, nine for eighty nine with one, five for seventy three, six for eighty eight. He is a primary uh, focal point of this offense. The New York Jets three and two, visiting the Green Bay Packers three and two. That's right, the New York Jets three and two. Good for them. Wow, two and O Zach Wilson. Yeah, he's really carrying. You just got to play against those seventh round rookie quarterbacks. Draft. <laughs> Yes, yes, I am crapping on Zach Wilson even when he wins because that's what I do. DraftKings Sportsbook, the line is Green Bay. They are favored by 7.5. The over-under is sitting at 45 points. Let's start with Zach Wilson. He's 2-0. The offensive line has done a good job. There are, if you want to you know, get really specific on certain metrics, Zach Wilson can, you can spin the story that he has looked good mm -hmm. uh in certain aspects of playing the quarterback but where is your confidence in playing him as like a fantasy quarterback uh my confidence in playing him is extraordinarily low i i need to see something better from him before i can put him in my lineup if i were to uh, i mean you know i'm i'm playing him over a, a over a pj walker type of course but when i look at you know if we're talking single quarterback leagues i would rather play you know Carson Wentz tonight or Daniel Jones. I've got a. I've got a. See to believe in Daniel Jones. The Green Bay Packers sixth right now against fantasy quarterbacks. Brees Hall. The takeover has happened. It's done. Brees Hall is that guy for the New York Jets. Michael Carter is still there, stealing touchdowns. Uh, Tevin Coleman style. So that may happen, but Brees is the guy in an every week start now. Here's the big discussion for me on the New York Jets. Garrett Wilson, he exploded onto the scene as a rookie because we had that, you know, week one, you're like eight targets. Holy crap. Okay. Maybe he's in play. And then 14 targets was turned into eight receptions for 102 yards and two touchdowns. Wide receiver six against the Cleveland Browns, an absolute monster performance. But since Zach Wilson has returned, 
Two catches for 41 yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are an atrocious defense. Three receptions for 27 yards against the Miami Dolphins, who are an atrocious defense. I know they didn't have to throw a ton to beat the Dolphins. They beat the pants off of them 40-17, to but the game was close-ish around the half, if I'm remembering it correct. What, what what level of confidence do you have for Garrett Wilson to actually be a fantasy starter? I, I have confidence that if if you need a you know a dart throw if you've got bye week struggles the talent of Garrett Wilson is fine enough to put in there last week only 56 percent of snaps but I attribute that a lot to the fact that towards the end of the game they weren't really throwing the ball nobody in the in the receiving game did much of anything two weeks ago when you saw uh, a more competitive game against Pittsburgh two for 41 yuck gross but 77% of snaps, six targets. That was with Zach Wilson. So I'm okay throwing him out there and just hoping that his talent, you know, b breaks something open, breaks a play. I'm, I'm fine with that. Now, I would, uh, like, if you're telling me, okay, other side of this ball, Romeo Dobbs, that's not even a question. It's Do Dobbs is. It was going to be. Yeah, Dobbs is absolutely in. You, you look at um, last week was a Randall Cobb game. Randall Cobb soaked up all the targets. But if you're. Looking on the season with Aaron Rodgers as a rookie, he's you know leading the team pretty much across the board in in routes and targets in receiving yards. Um, and as a rookie, you expect him to only get better. The opportunity and the the difference in quarterback. It's not even a close one to me. Alan Lazard, a touchdown or a hundred yards in all four of his games this year. He has quietly put together a very usable fantasy season. He is in play here against the New York Jets, uh, like. What what's your temperature on Alan Lazard? Uh, he's I love him. He was a my guy. To me, he's confirming my priors of what I thought he could be, which is like you're like okay, well the floor here is you have a very high likelihood of a touchdown because he's a mammoth of a man out there, and Aaron Rodgers is, is an efficient touchdown thrower. The target share has kind of bounced around a little bit between the wide receivers with, with Dobbs having the big game, Cobb this past week. But is Laz where is Lazard for you? Is he a, a spot start, a weekly flex, I think, a, uh, a bi-week fill-in? I think he's a weekly flex. He's someone that is fine to start on a weekly basis. He's got a touchdown in three of four games. I think that's going to continue. I mean, early before this season, if you're just saying who are the top five or six wide receivers to have a chance at double-digit touchdowns, Lazard was near the top of that list with the superstar fantasy option names. Just because you've got Aaron Rodgers, a lack of other, uh, you know, red zone weapons, and he's got a history of that. So I, I think he's not like a must start, got to smash him into my lineup guy, but I'm confident and happy to throw him out there. I think the real question is, would you rather start Lazard or Dobbs going forward rest of the season? Currently, it's still Lazard for me. It, it feels like Lazard is the safer option right now. The ceiling is higher with Dobbs as as the season goes on. The 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 Bob Tunyon experience continues to be a uh, a pump fake that <laughs> that when you think that we're going to be able to get him in there in there reliably, we saw the snaps increase every week for the first three weeks, and then they have dipped back down to forty four percent of the snaps each of the past two you, games. You can't. You cannot start. Yeah. Tunyon. I mean, you're you're hoping for a touchdown, but if you get the touchdown, you probably still don't get ten points, and that's just impressive. Yeah, here's his yardage on the season 36 11 37 22 23 this isn't a player that you could start in fantasy the Jacksonville Jaguars are two and three they take on the Indianapolis Colts two two and one DraftKings Sportsbook line is Indy minus two the over under is sitting at 42 points yeah boo uh that could be because Jacksonville we don't know what team is going to show up I don't know if they know what team is going to show up because I've seen a terrific Jacksonville Jaguar team play a few times this year, and I've seen last year's Jacksonville Jaguar team show up a few times now. Like last week. Yes. So what do you expect? Like, how do you think this game flow is going to go for the Jaguars? Um, you know, I it really is a, a, a good question. I, I expect a low-scoring game in this one. I think that both defenses are better than both of the offenses on the other side of the field. This is a divisional matchup, so you, you could see a lower-scoring, uglier affair. And then that means that you, you've got kind of your staple plays. Obviously, if Jonathan Taylor plays, 
you're going to play him. Yes. Right? The place you can beat the Jaguars right now, this defense has been on the ground. Their passing defense has been pretty darn good when you adjust for schedule, even better than what you would expect. So maybe it's not the best week for Alec Pierce this week because you have some, uh, you know, I think you're going to have a good pass rush getting to Matt Ryan. So the downfield targets might be a little bit more difficult, which is only happening 3.6% of the time. Matt Ryan is not going 20 air yards. It's just, it's not happening. Lowest in the NFL. Yeah, and, and we brought up, uh, I believe it was yesterday, the fact that Michael Pittman hasn't had the he over... One, yeah, he's like he has one deep target. Right, exactly. But Which, honestly, sounds kind of counterintuitive, but that means it might be a better game for Pittman in the sense that he needs to get the ball out quicker, get to the possession guy, and Pittman might have you know 10 targets and uh, seven, eight catches, and he's been really involved in uh, around the goal line. So I, I would be starting Pittman, obviously starting Jonathan Taylor, I think the question is, if Jonathan Taylor doesn't go, what do you do at running back here? I, got think, I think you go to Deion Jackson. If, if Johnny Taylor is out, Deion Jackson was RB25 last week against the Broncos. 13 carries turned into 62 yards, plus four receptions. And Meanwhile, unfortunately, Naeem Hines, uh, I mean, he had that concussion right at the beginning of last week. Uh, as far as I've, he's still in the protocol is the last thing that I had heard, so I don't, I wouldn't expect him to be playing. Uh, again, the it just, it was one of those like the two of them where it just it visually looked bad, which I, I think that's weighing in to the way that the NFL has to make their decisions right now, the, just the aesthetics of things. So Deion Jackson is in play. Over on the other side, James Robinson. Oh man. We so were, we, we were talking. Yes, we we were having a discussion in the office of how the er, the beginning of the year, James Robinson, we you couldn't believe one. I mean, I couldn't believe he was back on the football field, mm -hmm. being a starter. It, they told us all off season was going to happen. I did not trust them. Number two, he looked pretty good as far as in like not every single time he touched the ball, but. Over those first three weeks, he was hitting a big run. He was scoring touchdowns. And we we said, well, we've taken the L. The the guys, the Achilles injury guys of, of James Robinson and the Cam Akers had that big game against Arizona. It's the L. The, the, they have figured it out, and running backs can come back. However. He's sucked? He has. Yes, that's that's the nice way of saying it. Running back 58. Running back 51 the last two weeks. 3.6 a carry, 2.7 a carry. To go along with, you know, in week two when he was 2.8 a carry but kind of had the touchdown on a down running back week, if he stinks the rest of the year, we will still take an L because he was so good for the first three weeks for fantasy. Yeah, top eight or better for three straight weeks. Now, last week it seemed like a great matchup. It was a great matchup. Houston can't stop the run. It should have been a game that they were up in, and so you would expect to see more uh, James Robinson on the on the field. They were not up. They lost the game 6-13, to 13, couldn't score, and so James Robinson was only on the field 40% of the time. I, I still believe that he is a matchup type of player. Now, the Jags have kind of had the Colts number the way that the Texans have had the Jaguars number, so I do think you're going to be kind a rock, of paper scissors situation right yeah um i i do think james robinson is a fine flex play this week i know it, it it's hard it's it hard when a, me out. when a player has two back-to-back -back really bad games to put him in for a third time and and if you've got other good options by all means bench him but if you have to start him i don't think that it is nail in the coffin yet speaking of a player who's had two rough weeks after three weeks of being on fire to start the season, Christian Kirk this last week against the Houston Texans, despite being on the field for a season high 96% of the snaps, he saw three targets and turned that into one catch for 11 yards. Woof -da. Now he's taking on the Indianapolis Colts, who are currently <clears throat> number one <laughs> against fantasy wide receivers. Are you... Scared of Kirk, or did he? Is he still maintaining his weekly? I play him as a wide receiver too. 
Uh, he has moved to the flex category. Oh, a demotion. Just a slight demotion. Uh, you, you, you. I can... don't know. If you, when you lose the position name in front of your job, like oh, I'm not... a wide receiver one. Oh. I'm a wide receiver two. You've gone to where? I'm, I'm a flex player. Mm -hmm. You're not a wide receiver anymore. Yeah, you. That's a. It's that's pretty a embarrassing. Pretty big demotion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Kirk's going to be pretty embarrassed uh, when he hears this. You know. It, it's really a matter of who are you starting him over. So let's take a look at some names because I, I do think that Christian Kirk is one of those guys that – Christian Kirk or Michael Pittman? I would play Michael Pittman. Christian Kirk or Devontae Smith against Dallas? Oh, that one is tough. I'm going to go with Devontae Smith. I like it. I, I, like, I like the call there. The It's the interesting about – the first few weeks of fantasy football are so stupid because I mean they're great. I'm not saying they're actually stupid. I'm saying it's it's hard because it locks in what you think about a player. Devontae Smith had a goose egg in week one, and since that, he's been great. Like mm -hmm. Devontae Smith has been incredible, and yet week one, the first impression, that's what you think about Devontae Smith. Christian Kirk great three weeks so this is who he is so you're just like oh a couple bad weeks it does uh, that doesn't matter but it but Devontae Smith had one bad week and he's just he's been fantastic yeah whatever happens in the first week or the first two weeks skews so much heavier than any other time of the year for sure I mean it, and, and it never goes away it goes away next season not yes. not the, the whole rest of the it season off. it's tough what about uh? What about my guy Evan Ingram? Six for sixty nine. Is he in? Yeah. Evan Ingram or Kyle Pitts? Oh man, uh, I I think this uh, is gross. The matchup is there. Colts twenty eighth against the tight end position. The Colts are very do it, do it. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to do it because I wouldn't do it. Uh, Evan Ingram, even though the matchup is fantastic, uh, the reality is that. Evan Ingram has the same baseline that Kyle Pitts has. He's just as likely to have a crappy game. But the matchup is good, and if you are, you know, if you dealt with an injury or you've got Hawkinson on bye week and you're looking for someone that's still on waivers late into the week, Evan Ingram's matchup is fine, and you could pick him up and play him. I think that, you know, he's probably going to be north of eight fantasy points in this game. Let's see. On the other, is there anything else we need to talk about? Paris Campbell, no. Uh, never. The, the Colts keep tantalizing us with the upside of their the the tight end position, but no. they keep rotating. And you just you, you, even when it it feels like someone has has gotten the edge, they haven't. No, and I'm and I'm not going in on Trevor Lawrence until he shows it to me again. The Minnesota Vikings at four and one, traveling to the Miami Dolphins, who are three and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Minnesota minus three. The over under is sitting at forty five and a half. Jason is excited about Kirk Cousins this week. I am. I think this is a really good matchup. The The secondary is a little banged up for the Miami Dolphins. They have not been good so far. They're averaging 32.1 points given up to wide receivers. This appears to be a really good matchup for a team in the Vikings that are playing very well. That week two primetime drubbing that the Eagles gave to the Vikings, I think is skewing people a little bit negatively towards, uh, you know, their view of the Vikings as a whole. They, they've been very, they're four and one. And the only team they've lost to is undefeated. So I think the Vikings are good. The The Dolphins are obviously hurting right now. The fact that Teddy Bridgewater, even if he clears concussion protocol, is going to be the backup. Uh, yeah, that's what they said. That's what McDaniel said yesterday. And that was so strange. Uh, you know, it's it's hard. I was thinking about it more because when it first came out, I was like, what in the what? Like, if he clears concussion protocol, yeah. why would you put out uh, the guy we saw last week who was, co you know, there's a reason he was a seventh rounder and he's a rookie. Like, put out Teddy Bridgewater who can get the ball to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. But then I started, you know, putting myself in the human reality of you just did this with Tua. You The doctors came out and said, yeah, he's good to go in. And so you trust the doctors, you put them in, and you have that scary situation. And it's tough to be like, okay, the doctors say Teddy's good. What if you put Teddy out there? 
and he got hurt again. Oh, like what? No, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like the yeah. human element of that. When I started going, okay, I get it. I get it. For football, it's not the right thing for the human side. Maybe, maybe it is. Just err on the side of caution here and hope that your uh, running game that was good last week with Moster, which we'll have to check. Is there anything new on Moster? Can you check on the practice for the Dolphins if he's out there? We'll check. Thanks. Um, <laughs> you know, and 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 Waddle. Find that tweet. That we that we knew he was gonna miss. <laughs> and that uh, doesn't exist. We don't need to find the tweet if he's back at practice today. It's fine. It was a day of rest. But you know, at least this week, if they are going, um, you know, with Sky, then they get to game plan for it. They get to give him practice and scheme around what he can do with the weapons they have. But I, I do I do think that the position that the Dolphins are in right now is kind of a reeling position. The position that the Vikings are in is an aggressive upward arrow. So I like the Vikings offense quite a bit. Jason, Dolphins running back Raheem Mostert. Okay, there's an update. Was. Hmm? Back at practice. There it is. Hey. Hey. All right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he would play if uh, – if he's active Justin Jefferson every week Adam Thielen is very interesting this week as the Dolphins secondary we've we covered it is atrocious Dalvin Cook he's in every week but I think there's at least a, a, a minor discussion to have on Dalvin Cook the opportunities have absolutely been there since the shoulder injury however they have played Detroit the Saints and Chicago now I'm not worried about the Miami matchup but they have essentially turned to Dalvin Cook, who's seeing, you know, low sixty percent of the snaps since the injury. They've turned him into a grinder. Like, yeah, he's he's just carrying the ball. He's getting two targets each of the last two weeks. That's not the Dalvin Cook you want. Like weeks one and two, five targets, six targets. They have really shaped this into a timeshare with Alexander Madison. Do you have long term concerns? Zero. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have zero long-term concerns about I mean I I realize that the passing uh, you know that you look you look at the routes run and kind of passing down situations Madison has been more involved and Dalvin Cook has been less involved than what the expectation was and what you saw in the beginning of the year. Whether that's shoulder or whether that's hey, you know what? I think it's just better for our team to have that happen. I'm not worried at all because one of the things we need to Remember, is the gap between relevant studly fantasy running backs and any other running back is so large that if Dalvin Cook gets worse the rest of the season, he's still going to be amazingly valuable for fantasy football. There's nothing we can do about it. So to overreact and be like, oh, he's losing some routes. Maybe I should trade him high. Don't do that. Just keep your studly running back, plug him in your lineup, have him run for five a carry, get two touchdowns, and be sad that he missed out on this pass or that pass. All right. You don't have long-term concern. that like It's it's going to be great. We're going to the candy shop for the next couple of weeks. The bye week is in there. But then week nine at Washington, at Buffalo, versus Dallas, versus the Patriots. If you're, the, if you're still the grinder, just say that, like, like I'm with you that you can't. He's still a high end running back, but his where his status is amongst the top end running backs. I think it will be interesting to see what that what that turns into. Starting with that game at Washington, Baltimore Ravens three and two at the New York Giants, who are four and one. There's a surprise team every single year. This year, ladies and gentlemen, it is, in fact, the New York Giants, which hat tip to the what the coaching staff has done there because I'm not sure that the personnel overall has been revamped in a season, but uh, Joe Judge, not a good coach. That is Jason correct. Garrett, not a good offensive coach because mm -hmm. this team is winning. They're at 4-1. and one. This should be an interesting matchup. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus six. The over-under is sitting at 45. Lamar Jackson, yes, please. Uh, it's been rough the last couple weeks. Is that correlated with Rashad Bateman not being active? It certainly could be, but he's elite. You put him in. At the running back position, though, J.K. Dobbins, is he back? Nine, 17, and eight opportunities so far. 
Like I said about Kenyon Drake, he was really involved this past week. The Giants are a a good defense. They're winning with their with their defense. Where are you at with Dobbins? Yeah, Dobbins to me is he's not in the running back category yet. He's still in the flex category. Oh, yeah. Th this matchup isn't great against the Giants. If you adjust for schedule, their top ten against the run, they haven't given up a lot of points overall. And I think for J.K. Dobbins, you know, when he's not very involved in the passing game, you you you're looking for touchdowns here. And this is one where without Rashad Bateman, if Bateman doesn't play, I worry a little bit about the kind of total points being scored by the Baltimore Ravens. Their their implied team totals twenty five and a half. That's good. If they you know if if they're hitting that, you're going to be fine with Lamar, obviously Andrews. Some wide receiver wide receiver will hit, and Dobbins could be a fine play. But I think there's a chance you know they they don't nobody else has scored that much against the Giants so far this season, including. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. So if you've got a less than full strength receiving core missing Bateman, is this the team that really is going to do that to the Giants? Uh, TBD, but I I have my fears on this game. Sure. It, it, this matchup's pretty easy of who you can actually play. Daniel Jones, like we said, if, if you're in desperate times and you need a streaming quarterback, the Ravens are still 31st against fantasy quarterbacks. And the, I know those numbers were skewed. Uh, uh, by getting torched one one of the weeks, and they've been okay the other ones. But yeah, there's three players but, in this game that but you Jones play, is still interesting, and that's it. Yeah, and Bar they're all studs: Barkley, Lamar, Mark Andrews. Check out. That's it. Done. Don't no. don't get don't get cute with all the others. You can start J.K. Dobbins in a flex if you need to. You can, uh, you know, go to Daniel Jones on a two quarterback or a really bad situation. You know, but don't get cute here. Don't try the other options. <laughs> Starts of the week. Jason, your quarterback start of the week is Kirk Cousins. We just talked about how I like the matchup against Miami. They are allowing the highest expected passing points per attempt, the fourth most fantasy points to the quarterback positions. They have a 25 point implied team total. We all have them ranked inside the top 12. So when you're looking at, you know, a, a quarterback that is kind of on that, should I start him? Should I not start him? I think it's a good week for Kirk Cousins. I'm going with the plant man. I'm going with Tom Brady. Is it, let me see if I can. Flat Thank you. Yes, the plant man. I think we are back. It was a bit of a rocky start there, but the uh, the passing expectation, as in they're they're passing more than you would think, that has been on the rise the past two weeks. Plus the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm sorry, Steeler Nation. They have given up top twelve quarterback numbers in four of five weeks. They've allowed the most twenty plus yard. Passing plays, they are not good right now, and that should be exploited. Andy's uh, quarterback start of the week is Aaron Rodgers, which I love, at home, out, off a loss against the Jets. I do think Aaron Rodgers has has a really good game. Yes, with uh, Matt LaFleur, Rodgers is 9-0 and coming off of a loss in the regular season and where he's averaging 250-plus, two-and-a-half passing touchdowns, so – yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's he's in a good position. Why? Uh, let's go to the running back. Yeah, position. so at running back, um, since Andy's not here, I'm taking my start of the week, Ramondre Stevenson, who was his, <laughs> uh, because my goodness, is Ramondre Stevenson going to be a smash start? Now that was Andy's start of the week. Yes, I have one thing that we need to talk about with Ramondre. Okay. Uh, Ramondre. Okay, here. let's have it. Which one is it? Which which name do you go with, Ramondre Stevenson? Mm, no. Ramondre Stevens season. Definitely Stevens season. Okay. Ramondre. I'm a, I'm a Ramondre Ste uh, Seasonson. S Seasonson sounds better. Like, it's a better play on words, a better pun. But it's but it's stupid. <laughs> like, I don't understand why. Well, you just said it's better. How is it stupid? I'm saying it sounds better. But Seasonson. It's all about how it sounds. Ramondre Seasonson. The people at home aren't reading I guess this my, podcast? The, my point my point here is I don't think this is a season-long thing. I think when Damian Harris comes back, he's going to end up scoring more fantasy points than Ramondre Stevenson. Some so Stevenson sounds too long-term. Exactly. But this week, <laughs> goodness gracious, Cleveland's rush defense is awful. I mean, they are terrible. And Ramondre Stevenson is going to get all the work. You have to have him in there. We talked about him on the ride or die. My actual start of the week was Jeff Wilson. Uh, my name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. He has seven runs of 15-plus yards. That's behind only Nick Chubb and Saquon. He looks great. Since he's been a starter, he is a top-12 running back over the last month. So just put him in against Atlanta, who is a good matchup. 
Yeah, it's delightful. Uh, my start, it's Melvin Gordon. We talked about him on the Ride or Die segment, and I wasn't too sure. And then as we were getting more and more ready for the weekend, the matchup is just too juicy. The, the, the Chargers have given up top six numbers to fantasy running backs for four straight weeks, allowing 5.8 yards per carry. That's the highest in the NFL. Gordon was the lead back, so let's see if those opportunities continue. Opportunities matchup. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the ceiling truly is with what Mike Boone and Latavius Murray getting involved. But the point is, if I have Melvin Gordon, he's in my running back two spot. Yeah. No. I. I. I like it. He should be started. We have to make an assumption on Latavius Murray, and my assumption is that Latavius Murray should not be a reason to fear anybody else okay so uh at wide receiver um at wide receiver I've got uh, the stack with Kirk Cousins Adam Thielen someone that I have not been super high on I've been kind of anti-Thielen most of the offseason he seems a little bit touchdown dependent well this seems like a good touchdown game for him Miami is allowing the highest expected uh points per pass attempt the second highest pass success rate in hard it's from uh PFF <laughs> he's been talking about this for a while Adam Thielen hasn't gone three straight non-injury regular season games without scoring a touchdown since 2018 well, he caught a touchdown week three so the math checks out Are you, this, is this a an Andy Holloway style touchdown guarantee this is Andy Holloway's touchdown guarantee it is I just heard <laughs> from Yep, checking right now. Andy Holloway says He's, we just patched him into the just headphones. Just patched him in. He said, "I guarantee Adam Thielen gets a touchdown." So, okay. this is not mine. Okay, I want you to remember that. You know, if you're if, betting for this touchdown, give him the all the credit, of course. Um, and also, he has a much better wide receiver start of the week. Hollywood Brown is uh, someone that yes, please. If you think there's a chance that you've got great wide receivers that that are better than Hollywood, you do not. You must put Hollywood in every single lineup that you have on the road against Seattle. Who sucks? Hollywood's been great. No Hopkins yet. Smash play. Mm. My wide receiver start of the week. I, just, I, I want to highlight this player because I think it is time to get him back into your lineups. That is Michael Gallup of the Dallas Cowboys. You're like, oh, he's playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Hold on to your hats. I don't know why. Oh, I get it. It's, a, it's like a cowboy thing. Yeah, I don't know why. I went big thunder. Uh, oh, that was. The wildest wild ride, ride in, in the wilderness. wilderness. Uh, I, whatever. It's going to be a wild ride, but here's the thing. To Philadelphia, they are giving up points to the wide receiver position, and Michael Gallup is back. That's what I wanted to highlight. He, You're like, well, he ran 17 routes last week. CeeDee Lamb ran 19. He is back, and Michael Gallup targeted on 29% of his routes this past week. Dallas will throw. Again, Philadelphia is top five against the run, but seeing the third highest opponent pass rate, it's not like we haven't seen Michael Gallup hit big games against Philadelphia the last time they played. Six for 121 and two. Just giving, giving Gallup some dap here that I think we're at the point that he's back into your starting lineup. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, <laughs> At tight that end, seemed really not confident. <clears throat> well, that was that was me looking. Yes, up, that was me looking up a different. I stat agree, and not listening at all. Um, at tight end, I've been waiting for multiple weeks for this one. I I had this one penciled in like three weeks ago, where I was looking ahead to the matchup against Seattle, who is so bad at tight end you can't even comprehend. Whenever you are five weeks into a season and there's a team as bad against tight end as the Seattle Seahawks have been, you start targeting them forever. And it happens to be Zach Ertz's final week of relevance. Plato once oh. said, and I've quoted it multiple times Let's regarding Zach Ertz, off. necessity is the mother of invention. Well, he is necessary to this offense. Zach Ertz is, uh, without Hopkins, he is a possession guy. And to quote another great scholar, the great Oaken from Frozen. Yoo-hoo, big summer blot. <laughs> this is your last chance. It's final sale. He usually sale. talks about hamstrings on this show. Yeah, but now it's a clearance rack moment with Zach Ertz. Uh, I mean, Seattle, absolutely atrocious. Zach Ertz going to get the targets. If you want to bet on a tight end this week, it's Zach Ertz. And I'm... Uh... I'm putting on my steel underpants here oh, because no. this guy has let oh, everybody yes, down I love it. all year. I think it is George Kittle week. 
which is yeah. <laughs> but the Falcons are giving up 14 points per game to the tight end position. Even Cade Otten, rookie tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, went six for 43 against him. You knew there would be ups and downs with George Kittle. I think we're about to go up. Two career games against Atlanta, 17 targets, 13 for 134, six for 93 last year. I, th I have hope that this is a George Kittle week. <sighs> if it doesn't happen this week, we're not. No, no, we're not. Mm, no, we're not going mm, to talk it's about because it it's week. happening. I, I traded for George Kittle. It's got to happen. It's going to happen week, this week. We have one more very important segment. Jason's boom boom kicker of the week last week. So Jason has been in London for two weeks. That's right. That's a long vacation. Where are we going next? Jason Moore's ironclad, locked and loaded, 100% guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week. <clears throat> Leaving the old island, I blasted off in style and drifted slowly towards the near sun, becoming a blaze of glory, a dark turn in this boom boom story, yelling, two field goals for McPherson! I know you're with me on this one because two course. field goals for McPherson is our thing. Two field goals per week. We would have hit it again last week, but Zach Taylor decided to have courage and go for it on fourth down and then call the stupidest play that he could call. Hey, that's great. Learn learn your lesson, yeah. Zach. Be back. Be a coward. <laughs> Don't be brave. Yeah, just when it comes to fourth down, mm -hmm. put McPherson in. Mm -hmm. Let him close. It's the one coach I want to keep having you – Kick it on fourth down. That's going to do it for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. I hope we get a good game this evening. We won't. But I hope that we do. Me too. And we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>